So let's look at the second part of this, which is to do with trapping possible errors that we could get in our CRUD site. Now, this is quite complicated in that what we really need to do is we need to sort of look at each page and try and deduce what are the kind of mistakes that people could make when they were using the site, interacting with it, entering information. So really, you just need to go through each of the pages and sort of think, what's the worst possible case here? What's What could a naive user enter into the page? So we'll just demonstrate a couple of these. Um, let's start with the insert page. So we know that we have an EMP insert page, and what that's all about is actually about inserting information about a person, uh, inserting an employee, and we'll click OK, and then that information will be saved into the table. So how could this go wrong? Well, uh, perhaps people could uh, not put information in, like e-name, they could leave that blank, or they could leave hire date out or something like that. So we'd actually have to try and write some if statements that would catch that. More importantly, for it, um, perhaps, have a look at the EMP number. We know that EMP number is a unique identifier for every person. So if you look down here, you can see obviously we've got 557602. So what could happen, of course, is somebody could attempt, by mistake, to try and insert an employee with an EMP number for somebody that already exists. They could try and reuse 557, of course. Now, of course, it depends how the database is set up. That could, worst case scenario, overwrite 557. So we'd actually have to put some sort of trap code in here just to kind of capture that. And the way that we would do that is in EMP insert response. We basically write a little bit of SQL, and that's what's on this first line. And what it does is it basically tests the database to see does that EMP number already exist. And so we send it off to the database and we get our result back. And then what we would do is we, we've basically got two possible outcomes here. Either that number is in use, that person exists, or the number does not exist. If the number exists, well, we can't go ahead with the insert. We can't insert a record. If someone already has that EMP number, it must have been um, incorrectly input. So we want to say something like, echo a message to the user saying something like, can't insert that record as that EMP is in use. So we're going to wrap that up in an if statement. You know, So if the EMP number already exists, then I'm afraid that we can't insert that person. Otherwise, and that's what's on the bottom half of here, you can see that when we could actually just do the insert, something like that. What about deleting then? How could that go wrong? So if you remember the delete functionality, what that's doing is that's enabling us to actually remove a row from the table. And the way we do that is by entering an EMP number. Well, how could that go wrong? Well, we could try and delete someone that's already been deleted or doesn't actually exist in the first place. And of course, what we're doing here is we're matching on an EMP number. So what would the error code for that look like? Let's go to EMP delete response. It would look sort of the same. What we would do is we would get that EMP number from the form. And again, we test for it. So we look in the database table to see if someone already has that EMP number. Now, in a way, this is the other way around from EMP insert response. We test to see if that EMP number does not exist. If it doesn't exist, we can't delete it. So we could say something like, can't delete that record. That person doesn't exist. It's not in use. Again, wrapped up in an if statement. If the number is actually there, then we can actually do the else bit. We can do the delete, and that's where the rest of the code would fall. So EMP update, and I'm not going to show you this one, but it's the same idea. What a, what could go wrong here? Well, it's you know somebody could try to update a record for someone who doesn't exist. So again, we'd have to put sort of catch statements in here, select statements to test to see if that person was there, if statements with different alternative outcomes, something like that. And there are lots of other, other different parts of that that we could go through to look at those and see where it could go wrong. I will just mention this one final thing, this notion of sanitizing your inputs. Now, sanitizing your inputs is all about making sure that people don't try and um, crash your site by entering information into input fields, which is malformed. And uh, probably the most common 
way of doing this would be to enter, for example, um, sort of an SQL into that box there. You know, would our site actually attempt to run that SQL? And of course, if they could run SQL in that gap, they could do all sorts of things. They could delete a table or they could try and extract some information or they could try and extract passwords, something like that. And what you do is to overcome this, you sanitize your inputs. So for example, you might remove all semicolons, you might remove all quotes, or you might look for reserved words in SQL, and make sure that those are all removed. The good news is that um, there are libraries that enable you, uh, you to do this. So you wouldn't really have to write this stuff from scratch. You just use the libraries, you run the libraries over input fields, and then you, you sort of get, you find out, you know, is there anything wrong with that field? And then you sort of sanitize it, you make it clean, you make sure it's safe for you to use it inside your application.